Before we begin, I'd like to emphasize that this podcast is an extension of my surgical work and research at Visionary Eye Doctors. And thank you all for tuning in every week or multiple times to kind of hear our about our research and how we help patients. And thank you to all of you who have flown in from all over the world to see us here. So I'm very humbled by that. So it is my hope and desire to keep this information free to all of you, especially to my dear patients. And in keeping with this mission, we are very thankful to our first sponsor for the podcast wizard dry eye mask many of you have heard me talk about the wizard before i have loved this product for years it looks like this i have one right next to my bed so does my husband i used mine last night and even you know if i can't sleep i'll use it uh, it's a wonderful product that you just plug in next to your bed or even at your computer i've been known if i start to develop a style to do the wizard as i type and then switch you know if i have warm just like a warm compress so it works wonderful for that so thank you to the wizard if you mention our name uh, podcast visionary eye doctors, Dr. Kramers, they'll give you a one-year guarantee. If anything happens to the product, just call them up and they'll replace it for you for free. So thank you to the Wizard Research team for sponsoring this podcast. Enjoy. everybody. I'm Dr. Sandy Laura Kramer, one of the board certified eye surgeons at Visionary Eye Doctors. Thank you for joining us today for the EYE Show podcast and YouTube channel. Thank you to all of you who have subscribed, have sent us questions, and of course, visit us here in Rockville, Maryland at the Visionary Eye Doctor offices. So today we're going to talk about one of the most common questions I get from patients around the world and especially friends and family. Why is my eyelid swollen? And I think many of us can get swollen eyelids from time to time. Time, but I want to go through the top seven causes or the all the causes of swollen eyelids. So when I'm looking at a patient and their swelling of the eyelid, as you should think about when you're looking at any swelling anywhere in the body, whether it's your joint, your face, your hands, uh, your conjunctiva, you're thinking about inflammation. That's the number one category is inflammation. And why is that inflammation there? So today we're going to talk about the causes, the treatments, and prevention. So let's say you wake up with a swollen eyelid or your child wakes up with a swollen eyelid. The number one cause by far is a sty. And, and you'll, you'll hear in my previous podcast about styes, but basically a sty is a meibomian gland that's gotten clogged, often from a demodex mite or residual makeup if it's a teenager or a woman uh, where there's either debris on the eyelashes that clogs the orifice of the meibomian gland which produces oil and when that happens there's a kind of kind of gets backed up and it forms a little ball. So if you have a swollen eyelid and you touch and you or the person says ouch or there's a little tenderness almost always it's a sty. The sty, if it's left untreated, turns into a scar tissue, which is called a chalazion. So a sty and chalazion are essentially the same thing, except for the time component. An acute swelling from a blocked meibomian gland is called a sty. If it's there for more than three to four weeks, we call it a chalazion because a scar tissue formation has occurred. So that's the number one cause. And within that category are things like blepharitis, which is this, this mites around the eyelashes, rosacea that increases your inflammation, uh, things, of course, like the demodex mite that I talked about. So that's the number one cause. The second cause is allergy. You wake up, there's some dust mites in the atmosphere around you when you're sleeping, or there's dust dust mites in your bed, or something is causing an allergy, or you didn't take off all your type of makeup, or something happened that you were exposed to an allergen and the eyelid swells, and that's the second cause. The third cause is I would say a virus or bacteria, so infectious category, but usually those patients have had a previous kind of either cough or uh, sore throat or even a fever. Uh, there can be redness involved, itching if it's a virus, generally no itching if it's a bacteria. There can be some kind of the uh, wiggle room in that kind of differentiation, but infection is that kind of third category, and we'll go through what you can do to prevent that and, and treat that. The fifth is a bug bite, so we're always looking for just a little kind of opening a little bite, especially under the microscope slit lamp we have here, we'll look and see if there's a little bite. Often it's a spider, it can be a tick, of course, it can be a mosquito, and then people can be allergic to that bite and then have a swelling that's the inflammation. The sixth, one, two, three, four, fifth, the fifth is fluid retention. So either you had a lot of salt the night before, we don't recommend eating a lot of salt in general, but eating a pizza the night before, some people will wake up with swelling because when you lie down, the eyelid skin 
has is the thinnest skin of your entire uh, body and, and face really so there's fluid that will kind of pool especially in your eyelid if you've had a lot of salt so try and avoid that or you could have fluid retention from a thyroid eye disease picture or there's something going on with your immune system so whenever we see that we're thinking of other categories of autoimmune issues like lupus Sjogren's anything that could increase inflammation from an immune component and then the next category would be like a foreign body. Either you had an eyelash stuck on your eyelid, or I've had a patient that had a metal foreign body for a little bit more than a week, and the eyelid started to get swollen because they didn't see it until he came in and we looked under the microscope. So foreign body, we're looking, we'll sometimes flip the lid if there's no pain. Uh, when you touch, let's say there's no sty, but it is swollen, I'll flip the lid to make sure there's no foreign body. Even deep in the fornix, we'll double check that. And the last one is a tumor, and that's very rare, of course, but we're always looking and thinking what else could be uh, a risk to the patient's sight and life, and so we're looking for any type of tumor, which is rare. So how do we treat these? So the most common way to prevent kind of a swollen eyelid is to keep the eyelids clean, warm water, washing. You, you'll hear my other videos talk about cleaning the eyelids either with diluted baby shampoo, di very diluted tea tree oil, Optase wipes, Avanova, Accusin, hypochlorous acid. There's so many products over the counter now to keep these mites that we all get on our eyelashes. It's just like bacteria in your mouth. You're going to brush one moment and it'll be back within an hour. Same thing with these mites for many people. These mites can cause a swollen eyelid and they're called demodex and they can cause a sty. So trying to keep the eyelids really clean, blinking, trying to take breaks at the screen keeps the oil pumping so there's a less of a, a risk that the oil will get backed up and cause a sty. And so check out my sty podcast and video on that because it'll go through what to do. Same thing with the chalazian. Try to avoid that initial in, uh, inflammation and sty to begin with. Uh, the second option for, and so for treatment for the sty would be either warm compresses as much as you can without burning the skin. I like to tell people a hundred times a day with a little pot, water, pot of water, I'll put my finger and put this heat kind of going up and down when it gets cold keeping the heat on without hurting the skin as quickly as you start to feel any type of tenderness of your eyelid because it means a sty is forming. And if you do that, you'll avoid having to get either an intense pulse light treatment, which is a uh, treatment that we're using now to prevent the chalazian scar tissue, but it's not 100% guaranteed and it isn't covered by insurance. And the third option is excision, where we actually slice open the gland, take out that gland. It is a surgery. It is uncomfortable. And so we try to avoid that. So trying to prevent it, we'll go through that in just a minute. Allergies, we treat the allergy. We try to find out what the allergen is. We'll do an allergy test and then treat the different types of allergies. We have a podcast on allergies also that kind of goes through things you can do like cool compresses. You can The cold is always for inflammation, so coolness. People sometimes put a spoon in the refrigerator or freezer for a few minutes and then put it right on their eye to kind of decrease the swelling of the eyelid, try to decrease the bags that people can sometimes get from swelling underneath the eye as well. That will help with allergens. And then we'll have some Sometimes people sleep with either something called either uh, moisture chamber goggles or some type of kind of covering to just protect their eyes from the allergens they might be exposed to when they're sleeping and then have a HEPA filter next to their head in their bed because that helps as well. So know what your allergies are and allergy season especially can come quickly and the first symptom can be a swollen eyelid or swollen conjunctiva. For bed bugs or, or bites or any of those types of things that can sometimes bite you, of course, that's hard to prevent. So just look out for those. And we're always looking for that little bite mark. And we'll treat sometimes those patients with an antibiotic because they can actually get infected more easily, especially if it's certain types of spiders, uh, and then a steroid. So we'll generally treat those with a combination ointment or drop, usually an ointment, uh, with a steroid and an antibiotic to prevent the potential infection. And then, of course, to treat the inflammation with the steroid. Some patients with any of swelling, if it starts to get worse, it's actually from a bacterial virus or even a bug bite that gets infected, it can actually start to spread and call a, cause a preceptal cellulitis, in which case we have to actually give an antibiotic by mouth and sometimes even oral steroids, which is rare, but can happen. Okay, in terms of fluid retention, just avoid salt in the evening. If you keep having this problem, please talk to your medical doctor to be checked for your thyroid function test and ANA to check for lupus. It's a general marker of inflammation and Sjogren's syndrome, just to make sure there's nothing we're missing. If you have joint aches and swollen eyelids, talk to your IMD or OD about getting a Schirmer's test, which can tell you if you have a lack of water from your lacrimal gland. And that swelling of the lacrimal gland can be a sign of 
uh, lupus or Sjogren's syndrome or even sometimes other autoimmune diseases. So we want to know. So make sure you don't forget about that. And then in terms of foreign body, just obviously make sure uh, you are kind of not, you know, protecting your eyes if you're doing any type of uh, uh, work at home with nails and hammers, we tend to see that sometimes, or any type of work where you need to be protecting your eyes, prevention is, is very important for that. And then tumor, we'd have to treat that right away. We'll do a CAT scan or MRI if we are sp suspicious of that. Uh, but the most common cause of, of that kind of concern for tumor is actually a thyroid issue, where the swelling is from the the what looks like it's a tumor, but it's actually a thyroid. So whenever we see anything that we're concerned about that, we'll check the thyroid function tests. Prevention is always important. Very, being very careful about what you eat, trying to decrease your inflammatory foods. We've talked about this in previous podcasts. Decreasing your gluten, sugar, dairy in that order is helpful to prevent inflammation. There's now more and more data coming out every day on this. Uh, so that's important. Keeping the eyelids clean, like we talked about, to prevent demodex mites. Checking to be careful with allergies. Know what your allergies are and try to treat them, see an allergist if you're having issues with allergy. And then for viruses and bacteria, trying to prevent them. So I have a podcast on how I have helped with preventing viruses at home. And of course, bacterial, uh, obviously preventing touching your eyes ever, unless you're sure your hands are clean, because you never know where your hands have been and what kind of viruses and bacteria are on your hands. So really try to take a tissue if you have to clean your eyelid or wash your hands or put alcohol before you touch your eyelids. And that's a good habit to teach kids. Because if they get a pink eye, uh, a viral conjunctivitis, and they pass it on to you, and you have to miss work and potentially have big issues, it's not fun. So teaching everyone to just avoid touching your eyes is a good habit. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. Please continue to subscribe. That really does help us. Please send us good feedback if this has been helpful for you. That really does help me personally as well. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day.